Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give glory to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, and our Dona Yache, Mishiaka. And we hope you all are enjoying this opportunity, enjoying this journey toward a great calling of Alahayam in Yache, the hope of life. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the scriptures to understand that this battle, this war that we are in for our soul is really hinged on our obedience and our obedience is the war of our minds. If we can overcome the war of our minds, we can overcome what is around us. Because the battle is within and you conquer what is within, then you have strength through reaction to overcome what is without. Because we are firstly our own greatest enemy. And then the world. <laughs> so let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 25 to 28, please. Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Now it's interesting, he said, ye hypocrites, because to do all the things outwardly by keeping the Sabbath day, and wearing fringes and not wearing any unclean clothes, you know, not eating unclean food, which are all things that we're supposed to do. That's righteous. That's according to the law. We definitely are supposed to do them. But if we don't clean the inside, it makes it null and void. Because as he said, you wash the outside, but the inside is full of extortion and excess. We're full of lust within and lust of the flesh. Hence, the laws that we're thinking we're keeping, in truth, we're not keeping anything because we're not clean on the inside. Right. And continue reading there. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So, we have to deal with what's within us first. Right. Yes, we have to keep the commandments. We also have to keep the commandments in our hearts too. We have to become whole. We have to become one. We have to be righteous within and without. Because Ahaya see at the heart, and he tried the reins to give every man according to what his works are. He shall receive that reward. So you can see what the precepts are telling us and get a clear understanding of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is to talk well, but not do well. Right. Or to do some things well outwardly, but inwardly. We're full of iniquity. We're still operating in pride or lust or lying or deceiving or guile, malice. We're not truly righteous. And that's why Yaji said, you blind Pharisees. Because we're actually blind because we don't see that we actually have to do it within too. We think we can get by by just doing it without. That's blinders. We have to come out of that and turn and come unto Allah with a sincere heart and overcome what's within us. Overcome the iniquity within us that we may truly be able to keep all the laws, statutes, and commandments by faith in Yahche and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. He's testifying of us how we are and how we look in the sight of Allah when we operate in this hypocrisy. What we say and do not. Because, you know, we might talk about we have to keep the Sabbath. But we're telling people in pride. And we're arrogant because we think we know more than them. Or we think we're better than them. We're still just as bad. Because the pride is against the fruits of the Spirit. And it's against the commandment to operate in pride. All right. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Try to look righteous in people's eyes. Yet within, we have not attained unto the calling of Yachi. We're not walking in humility, in love, in joy, in peace, in gentleness, in goodness, in faith, in temperance and meekness and so we can put this on a broad band I know we're, 
we're speaking about our own people, but even other nations and other religions, no matter how many prayers you do, if you don't clean the inside of the cup, you're still just as in much of the iniquity as anyone else. That doesn't make you righteous, and it doesn't change anything. No. That's a great deception what those religions have done to make us think that just by praying we'll be saved. Right. But that's contrary to the gospel. Because Yache prayed and he worked righteousness. All right. And he is our example unto salvation. So, what verse is that? I'm on 29 right now. All right. Woe unto ye scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And this is a definitely strictly against the Israelites. Right. But our behavior now is exemplifying that we are no different. Right. Because our fathers that did those things, they didn't have the fruits of the Spirit. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Mm -hmm. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Ye attested that we were serpents. Because we were beguiling, we tried to act righteous, but inwardly we're full of wickedness. May we all examine ourselves and look at what we've really been. Look at ourselves. Have we really been operating in all the fruits of the Spirit? Have we truly been operating in the love of Allah? Being of a perfect heart, not rendering evil for evil, not taking vengeance into our own hands? Have we really done these things? Have we truly forgiven people from the heart? Or are we still bitter? This is the true test to overcome what's within us. And we ought to focus on cleansing the inside of us. That is the mind. And we may truly be clean. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Allah that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Allah, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Allah. Notice we were being conformed to the world, we were being trained to be as the world, everything they were teaching us. But the apostles of Yache. The apostles of Ahaya Alahayam are encouraging us to be transformed, to be completely made over by our minds. Because if you overcome, as we talk about what's within, then you can truly overcome what's without. And to be transformed, you have to look towards what's right in the eyes of Ahaya, according to his perfect will, and what is excellent in, uh, and approved in his sight. And by precepts, Romans chapter 2, verse 17 and 18 shows that's through the law. Because you have to look at the law to find what's excellent, being instructed out of it. And let's also look at Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So now we have the opportunity to choose to yield to Yahshua to be transformed in our minds and that will lead us to being transformed without or to continue going the path we were on, being conformed to the likeness of the world. Whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Therefore the roads are set. We have to choose this day while it is today. Right. And hear his voice. Who you listen to is who you serve. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, in your mind is not just you thinking. You're actually being spoken to. There's an angel of wickedness and an angel of righteousness contending to see what you will choose. And this is the war that we're in. And it's according to the scriptures. Look at the shepherd of Hermas 
in commandment 6, we were given understanding on what faith really is by knowing what is actually going on. Mandate 6, I'm okay. sorry. I charge thee, saith he, in my first commandment to guard faith and fear and temperance. Yes, sir, I say. But now, saith he, I wish to show thee their powers also. Now note, can you read that what he said again? Please. I charge thee, saith he, in my first commandment to guard faith and fear and temperance. Faith, fear, and temperance. And now he's going to show them their powers to understand what you're doing by faith and fear and temperance. Yes, sir, say I. But now, saith he, I wish to show thee their powers also, that thou mayest understand what is the power and effect of each one of them, for their effects are twofold. Right. Now they are prescribed alike to the righteous and the unrighteous. For well, all people have this prescription. We all are prescribed to choose who we're going to have faith, fear, and temperance towards. All right. Do thou therefore trust righteousness, but trust not unrighteousness. So he already admonitioned to put your faith in righteousness. For the way of righteousness is straight, but the way of unrighteousness is crooked. So you see, righteousness is that path that Yahshua talked about that leadeth unto life. Right. Right? But walk thou in the straight and level path, and Yache. leave the crooked one alone. Yahshua said, enter into the straight gate. For the crooked way has no tracks, but only pathlessness and many stumbling stones. And that lets you know unrighteousness, breaking the commandments, not being the fruits of the Spirit, is going to cause many stumbles and eventually lead to that great fall. And it's rough and thorny, for it is therefore harmful to those that walk in it. But those who walk in the straight way walk on the level and without stumbling. For it is neither rough nor thorny. Thou seest then that it is more expedient to walk in this way. And that straight way is not rough or thorny because Yahweh said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Right. And they give you rest unto your souls. We just have to submit. It gets easy once you submit and don't resist. Right? I am pleased, sir, say I, to walk in this way. Thou shalt walk, saith he. Yea, and whosoever shall turn unto a higher with his whole heart shall walk in it. Here now, saith he concerning faith, there are two angels with the man, one of righteousness and one of wickedness. So there we see faith is a choice. Right. How then, sir, say I, shall I know their working, seeing that both angels dwell with me? Here, saith he, and understand their workings. The angel of righteousness is delicate and bashful and gentle and tranquil. When then this one enters into thy heart, for with he speaketh with thee of righteousness, of purity, of holiness, and of contentment, and of every righteous deed, and of every glorious virtue. So there we see, when those righteous thoughts come, that's the angel we should be hearkening to. And you notice how he's delicate, bashful, right? He operates in gentleness, speaks of purity. So that's how you know for a surety. If we're operating outside of that, or we see someone operating outside of that, it's the angel of wickedness. So it's the exhortation for us to stay with the angel of righteousness. Stay with the fruits of the Spirit, and that will keep you where the straight path and hope to life is. When all these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of righteousness is with thee. These then are the works of the angel of righteousness. Trust him, therefore, and his works. And that shows that the faith comes with works. Right. Right. So you understand what the faith in the angel of righteousness is. And even the angels understand it because they work in us. Right. 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 Now see the works of the angel of wickedness also. First of all, he is quick-tempered and bitter and senseless. Notice that hastiness of spirit. Right. That spirit of offense. Right. That's the angel of iniquity. And that feeling of being offended, like who they think they're talking to, or things of that nature. That's the angel of iniquity that said that to you and got you to agree with it. Right. It's amazing. And his works are evil, overthrowing the servants of Elohim. 
When everything he enters into their heart, know him by his works. And there you have clear indication when though when that fits of anger, when you feel offended like somebody doing something to you and things like that, that's the angel of wickedness. Ah, right. is gracious to send the angel of repentance to tell Hermas of these things so that we can know straightly who it is and what's going on. So when you hear that, when you feel that feeling, you know exactly who it is talking. And there's no confusion about it, and you stand aloof from it. Right. You have to understand who it is, because if you don't understand who it is talking to you, it overthrows you because you think that that's your own thoughts. So you get overthrown, you, you're in complete agreement with them. Right. And you think you're right. Right. You think, like, I have a right. He just said such and such to me. Or they just did such and such to me. This, this ain't right. I should do this. This is what I'm supposed to do. But it's actually an angel of iniquity. Because right. even Yache was spoken against. Right. And he responded in righteousness. Sometimes he didn't say a word. But he committed himself unto him that judges righteously. Just like David, whose heart was perfect. He didn't render evil for evil. Right. So you see, we're understanding these things. It gives us good exhortation to be guided and to better fight this battle that we're in within our minds. How shall I discern him, sir? I reply. I know not. Listen, saith he. When a fit of angry temper or bitterness comes upon thee, know that he is in thee. Then the desire of much business and costliness of many vanities and drinking bouts of many drunken fits and of various luxuries which are unseemly, and the desire of women and avarice, that's and, avarice mm -hmm. and haughtiness and boastfulness, and whatsoever things are akin and like to these, when these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of wickedness is with thee. This is important to keep in mind, to know these things. And notice, one of the first things he said was bitterness. Right. We talked about forgiveness from the heart. That angel of iniquity, he's the one that's keeping you from forgiving whomever for whatever they have done. Because so long as you don't forgive from your heart, that bitterness stays there. Right. And he can get a reaction out of you quickly. Because right. when something comes up, he makes you remember what was done before. That's right. And then you're right back angry or frustrated or harboring ill feelings. Variants. Right. And causing dissimulation. We have clear uh, examples of how he works to know him for what he is and to stand aloof from him. And to stand aloof from all the wicked women as well. And when we say women, we're talking of the evil spirits, the 12 women clad in black. Right. That's spoken of in Hermas, parable 9. We stand aloof from those women as well. The unbelief, pride, hatred, doubt, uh, irascibility, wantonness, and the other spirits that were mentioned there. All right, continue, please. Do thou therefore, recognizing his works, stand aloof from him, and trust him in nothing, for his works are evil and inexpedient for the servants of Elohim. Here then thou hast the workings of both the angels. Understand them and trust the angel of righteousness. And with that, that's a great exhortation for us to know very clearly what faith actually is. And who to fear. You fear Ahaya by keeping his commandments. And you fear the works of the devil by standing aloof from them. Right. And you understand how to operate in that faith and to operate in that temperance. You be completely temperate and keep away from all wickedness. But you be intemperate in doing all righteousness. Right. <laughs> this is straight from the book of Hermas <laughs> that we're talking about uh, when he, in the commandments that he had given. Continue, please. Hermes, Mandate 6, yes. 2 and 7. But from the angel of wickedness stand aloof, for his teaching is evil in every matter. For though one be a man of faith, and the desire of this angel enter into his heart, that man or that woman must commit some sin. Now this, even if you work in righteousness and he gets you, right. that lust that he provides enters in, you're going to error. Right. That's why you have to be so on guard in your mind. You have to be very much aware of what's going on. Continue. 
And if again a man or a woman be exceedingly wicked, the works of the angel of righteousness come into a man's heart. He must of necessity do something good. There you see how even wicked people can do good things sometimes. Because right. the angel of righteousness makes them do it. Right. Thou seest then, saith he, that it is good to follow the angel of righteousness and to bid farewell to the angel of wickedness. This commandment declare what concerneth faith, that thou mayest trust the work of the angel of righteousness, and doing them mayest live unto Elohim. But believe that the works of the angel of wickedness are difficult, so by not doing them thou shalt live unto Elohim. And there we see now you have the understanding of faith. So when you have faith in the New Testament, faith, 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 you can understand that it comes with works as well. It comes with trusting in the works of righteousness, trusting in the angel of righteousness, trusting in Yahweh, trusting in Ahayal Ahayam. It's all about working righteousness faithfully, knowing the reward that we have now that you have known what is coming in the end, you know the glory that awaits those that operate in faith. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, to see that though we did hark into Satan before, we have a new master now, and we can let go of those things. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now working from the children of disobedience, mm -hmm. among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in so. the lust of our flesh. So we all are operating and on the same. Right. We are all being led astray with him. And now you have clear scriptural understanding of when operating in disobedience, when one does not want to keep the commandments, or is trying to find a way out of keeping the law, it's the spirit of error. Right. It's the prince of the air. It's Satan. It's one of the Satans. It's an evil spirit that's leading you away. And it has led us away in times past. But now that I has been gracious to make us aware of it, to know what it is and to know his workings, we can stand aloof from it now and not operate in that behavior anymore. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice we're fulfilling the desires of the flesh and right. of the mind. It's within our minds that this fight is. All right. Because the enemy speaks to us and the thought is conceived. And when it conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin bringeth forth death. Because right. conception takes is a seed and it has to take root. Right. Hence, we have to be mindful not to hark into them, but to stand aloof from them when they speak. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Enemies in our mind by wicked works, because once we conceive those thoughts, our works are going to be evil. Right. Because even the angel of repentance told Hermas, if that desire of the angel of iniquity enter into your heart, that man must commit some sin. That's right. So if we give heed to them, they're going to lead us to error. It goes hand in hand. Right. I actually talked about you hypocrites. We can't hark into the angels of iniquity and think we're working righteousness. All right. They're leading us astray. And it's amazing that through Yache now we have this reconciliation. Through Yache now he's purged our hearts that we have a new master and we don't have to hark into them anymore. We can stand aloof by knowing who our master is. And in knowing who our master is, there's no dialogue for us to have with Satan. That's right. There's no conversation to have with these evil spirits. You hear the folly that they're talking, you turn unto a donor, Yacha, help me. Ahaya, help me. Ahaya, keep me. And you speak words of righteousness. The commandment says, this and this and that, thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm not going to do such a thing. I'm going to serve you, Yacha. Keep your conversation towards Adonayaji and stand aloof from them. That's right. And uh, then, if you want an example of that, you can look in the book of Jasher with Isaac and Abraham. Yes. Right. Yes. Because Satan literally spoke to Isaac, Isaac. and Isaac was, said, Father, you hear this man? Like, right. He went straight to his covering because right. right. the child is under their father. Right. 
Can you? There's also in Simeon as well. Can you go to Simeon? I have Simeon. Just started chapter three. Yes, yeah, Simeon chapter three. We're going to look at Simeon to get a uh, scriptural understanding of how to resist the devil. Because we're talking about this war of mind, you have to know the weapons of warfare. Right. And there's no conversation to have with Satan like, oh, I rebuke thee and da da. Right. There's no dialogue to have with him. The evil spirits want to be engaged. Right. You're just giving power to him when you say, I rebuke thee, because you're placing yourself above Elohim that you have the power to rebuke him. And then you're, you're even more fooled because. A little bit after you say, hi, rebuke thee, the thought might leave, but it comes right back because he's just playing in your mind. And, uh, and eventually you get taken down and you end up committing some sin because you never flee to your covering, which is interesting. The Testament of Simeon, chapter 3. And now, my children, hearken unto me and beware of the spirit of deceit and envy. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man. And suffer of him neither to eat nor to drink, nor to do any good thing. So you can see the, the wicked, as he was talking about in Hermes, you completely get sold over to hearken into that evil spirit, that evil angel, and you're doing all your works. Everything, even your whole, you're completely sold over to listening to him. That everything you hear, or everything you see, or everything anyone does to you, these spirits are completely controlling you. But it ever suggests to him to destroy him that he envied. Ever suggests. It's constantly because it's taken over your mind. It's taken over your thoughts. You've been overthrown, as it said in Hermes. Right. Hopefully this helps brothers and sisters understand when a bad thought keeps coming back or keeps replaying, it's a spiritual attack that's happening. So long as he that is envied flourisheth, he that envy is faded away. Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of Ahia. So we're going to see how to overcome this evil angel that speaks to you. If it has a strong hold on you, that overthrows you over and over and over, and you can't overcome it. We're learning how to overcome that evil angel. Simeon said, Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of Ahia. It's amazing showing that we learn from Hermas what the fear of Ahia is, to right. trust an angel of righteousness and depart from iniquity. That's right. And he's talking about how he fasted in righteousness, right. fasted in the fear of Ahia. I mean, he kept the commandments. Right. And he bare the fruits of the Spirit. And that's how we overcome these evil spirits. Right. And we see that it was a process of two years for him to help understand that this war in the mind and overcoming these evil spirits is not an overnight process, but it requires us to endure, working through our shortcomings with patience, and also for those who we interact with to have patience with them, knowing that it's not an overnight thing to overcome this war in the mind. Continue. And I learned that deliverance from envy comes by the fear of Elohim. For if a man flee to Ahia, the spirit runneth away from him. <laughs> it's amazing. Build on that with what you were saying so they can understand the... In what aspect? Like, how we were saying, because the devil overthrew you when right. you were trying to fight with him, but when you flee unto Ahia, right. then he leaves you. Right. Because you've gone on to the higher power. Right. The power that's even higher than him. Right, because if you're trying to fight them yourself, we can only fight carnally. In our prayers, our prayers go to Adonia. Right, that's what makes our prayers powerful because he hears our prayers and he acts upon our prayers. Right, but it's not us. So say, I rebuke thee. You're saying, In the name of Ahia, I rebuke you, but you're not cleaving unto him who has the power to deliver you, you're cleaving unto yourself as if the power is within you. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing how Simeon is breaking it down, giving understanding, and also we have, we have more examples in the testimonies and scriptures themselves. And you can also see in Hermes he was talking about, if we hearken to the angel of righteousness, and, we, and as you were saying, if we do the works of righteousness, 
and bear the fruits of the Spirit, keeping the commandments, it actually delivers us from that evil angel. Because now we know the difference. If we're already operating in the works of the Spirit, in the, in the fruits of the Spirit, and we're keeping the commandments, we know now, we have the knowledge of Elohim and the fear of Elohim to know that what that angel is telling you to do, that angel of iniquity is telling you to do, is against the commandment. It's against Elohim. But through ignorance, if we don't know the commandments and we don't know the fruits of the Spirit and we're not striving and continually working and operating in them, it's easy for the angel of iniquity to overthrow us because we're in oblivion or we're, or we're ignorant to the fear of Ahaya. So it's very, very interesting. Yeah, that's why they made sure we didn't know the law. Right. So we wouldn't have a ground to stand on. Did you finish what was in Simeon? I stopped right there so that you can touch on it. It says, For if a man flee to Ahia, the evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind is lightened. Mm -hmm. That was important, right? To see how you truly get alleviated from the attack. Right. As you had mentioned, it's not saying, In the name of Ahia, I rebuke thee, Satan, so and so. Right. It's not doing it has what no you power. Mean, right. You have in the scriptures, Yache said, Ahaya rebuke thee. And Michael said, Ahaya rebuke thee. They all went to the higher power. And for us, the power above every man is Christ, who is our head. That's why we are to turn unto him and pray, so that the evil spirit may flee from us. When it sees us, flee unto Allah and Lord Yache Christ. Also, Yache is the son of Allah. Yes, he is. Satan has no dominion over him. And Michael literally has dominion over certain spirits. So yes. he has power given to him from the Father and yes. from the Son. He's one of the Holy Seven. He's right. one of the archangels. He's the one that's going to tear Satan and his minions up here at the end of the world. As the enemy is a spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. He's a spirit. He's warring against us in our mind. We know we have Yache. Because Yache said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. So we cleave and flee toward him. And he takes care of all of that. Because he... He said, come upon me, for my burden is light, mm -hmm. and my yoke is light. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you see how your mind will be alleviated. Right, it will be lightened. Right, we went unto Yache. Right. So we you don't have to deal with that fight. Right. It's so wonderful how it also shows that humility and meekness of heart is what keeps us from the attacks as well. Because that was the yoke that Yache told us to put on. Right. The devil attacks. What he attacking with is pride and lust. Right. Hence, that yoke that Yache has, the true yoke of righteousness, will keep us from it and will ease our minds. The angel that was speaking to Hermes, actually, the whole topic was faith. So, it's interesting that if you flee to Adonia, it actually shows that you have more faith in him than yourself. Right. <laughs> right. So... Because that's the first thing that comes to your mind. Right. And it shows, it shows obedience. Because Paul said, either obedience unto righteousness. Mm. Right? In Romans oh, 6. Right. So you can see how all the, the faith, the obedience, the things that he was talking about, all pertained into overcoming the devil. Teaching us how to survive. Right. Teaching us how to live, to attain unto Yahweh. It is quite amazing the understanding of faith and talking about this obedience of the mind that this is where the war of faith really is hinging right. that we may overcome. It's quite wonderful the, the exhortation that we're given. So we see that it's an act of faith to turn on to Allah and pray for deliverance when under spiritual attack in our minds rather than taking on the spirit ourselves which shows our meekness and humbleness of heart, trusting that Yache will deliver us rather than taking power in our own hands. Was that the end of the... Um... No, no, no. I have a little bit left. All right. And henceforward he sympathizeth with him.
whom he envied, and forgiveth those who are hostile to him. See the spirit of humility and meekness that overcomes. Right. That overcomes the works of Satan. Because right. Satan was attacking with envy and jealousy, for example, with what Simeon was talking about. That's pride. Right. And yet, by fleeing to Adonah, he flee to the yoke of Adonah, the humility of heart and meekness. That's the fruits of the Spirit. Right. He flee to it, and his mind was lightened. That yoke became easy. Right. As the devil was trapped with a heavy yoke of bondage. It's amazing to see how even in those times, Simeon learned of the fruits of the Spirit. Right. And he said he forgiveth the person. Right. That's meekness. That's letting go from the heart. It's quite wonderful that the fruits of the Spirit is the weapons of the warfare in the mind. That's right. It said he even ceased from its envy. So that means he completely overcame it. Right. I have completely delivered him. And that's wonderful. And now we have also example in Isaac, as I had you mentioned in Joshua chapter 23, verse 29 to 33. This is when they were going to go sacrifice Isaac on the mountain when you read Genesis chapter 22, I believe. It says, And Satan returned and came to Isaac, and he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored. So you can see how Satan can take people over with no problem, or even come in the likeness of somebody with no problem. And he approached Isaac and said unto him, Dost thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Isaac heard this. So this is the temptation, right? And said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard my father, that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. He went straight to his covering. Right. He didn't even answer my word. Right. Straight to his covering. Like, Daddy, you hear this? <laughs> As we were saying to him, he's like, Abraham, my father, you hear this? Yeah, we could speak to our father. We speak to our Don't he hear our father the same way? You're right. Yacha, you hear this? Ah, right, you hear this? You hear what they, what they, you just trying to get me to sin? It's no different. Because <laughs> ah, your hair is all in sees all. Right. As does Yacha. They it's no different. And and it goes on to say, And Abraham answered his son Isaac and said to him, Take heed of him, and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan. Endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of Allah Hayyam. And here we have exhortations or to take heed. You hear the foolishness being said to you? Don't attend unto it. Right. Don't let that thought linger. Pay attention. That's why I said, and Peter said, be vigilant. So he said, watch him. Take heed. Listen to what he's saying and watch him. That's right. <laughs> Your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's right. I got to go to that because that's the part after that that's actually very important with this. Yes. First Peter 5 and 9, the mm -hmm. part I'm talking about. After it says the adversary, the devil, goes around, it says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's <laughs> what we've been talking about, right. the faith, work in righteousness, right. bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Right. Right. Uh, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Oh, we're all going through the same thing. We're all fighting against him. Right. So he said, take heed. Like, man, know his works. Right. Just like the angel of iniquity and Hermes. Right. Like, That's amazing. Peter was explaining right. the same thing, too. Right. As the Spirit was showing it. And that's how you can confirm that Hermes is a true record. Because you get the full understanding of what it means to resist him. And to be vigilant and, and know his works. Even as Abraham telling his son, take heed of him. Right. And don't attend unto him. Abraham understood these things. Right. Ahaya gave him understanding. Hence, he was perfect. Right. He said, don't attend unto him. Pretty much saying, don't agree with him. Right. Because if you attend unto him, you start hearkening. You're pretty much at his bay. Right. And then you get overthrown. Right. He's a seducer. Right. 
And that's why I had suffered us to mention when you hear the stuff, you got to turn from it right away, quickly onto Adonah. Right. Quickly call upon Yachi, quickly call upon Ahaya for help to be pulled away from it because the longer you listen, it's going to draw you over. This battle is very real, brothers and sisters. Satan appears in the physical as he appeared as this young man and he's operating within, trying to speak to us in our minds. Also, Sirach chapter 21, verse 27, this is an exhortation as well to know. Uh, brothers and sisters, if we're operating in iniquity and trying to resist Satan or curse Satan, we're only cursing our own soul because we're still serving him. He knows he has a grip because we're still sinning, even though we speak against him. Right. When the unholy curseth Satan, he curseth his own soul. That lets us know if we're sinning and not striving for righteousness, confessing our faults along the way as we stumble, but justifying ourselves, or just comfortable where we're at, continuing in our sins, not dealing with the issues we have within so that we can get to the next level in the faith, we're servants of Satan. Because at that rate, we won't be able to come out of our iniquity, serving sin. Romans chapter 6, Paul has said, Yield yourselves, servants to righteousness. Know ye not whom ye yield to, is whom you obey. Right. So we have an exhortation with this. Now, let's touch back to Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, please. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So his blood has reconciled us. And now you have a better understanding of what that means. He said we were enemies in our minds. So he's reconciling us back onto the right mindset through faith and the works of faith. So that eventually as we work through this process of repentance, we'll have the mind of Christ be reconciled by the renewing of our mind and be transformed continue in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight when you accept the blood atonement of Yache, he enters in and his goal as he said is to present you blameless unto Allah I am so you can see how we begin a process of being purged from within we talked about what grace truly meant when you watch the lesson on what is grace. This is that process. You're being brought through this, and you can see that now is being shown. This war is in your mind. You're being overcome from within so that you may triumph through Yahweh. Continue, please. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, <clears throat> and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. There was something that I don't think they might have just caught. Read verse 22 again, please, and then 23. And the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. Now that's the goal, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable, right? right? But there's a key to this. What does the next verse say? If. If. Ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So there you see, it's if you do it, right. if you abide in the faith, if you keep the commandments and bear the fruits of the Spirit, That's right. you shall be presented unblameable and unreprovable. Of the parable of the ten virgins. Right. They were unprepared. They endured for a while. Then when the light went off, they were unprepared. They had to run and get oil. Mm. And then by the time they got back, the it's door was late. shut. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. They Sh weren't prepared to endure. Right. They didn't continue in it. Right. As opposed to the ones that kept the oil, that was a test. They had extra them. oil. Right. So when they were prepared. They knew what was coming. Right. They kept their eyes on the prize, so to speak. Huh? Right. With that, we see that Jew and Gentile ought to forsake our old mind and walk as new creatures in the mind of Yahweh. Because this calling is for all his people. So we look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 23. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in Adonai, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, 
being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past filling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned, Mashiach. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yache. Well, something just struck me. I gotta go back. This is very interesting. Uh, verse 17. <laughs> this I say therefore and testify in Adonai that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. So we're gonna the vanity of their mind, so we already know according to Hermes that it's the angel of iniquity that's speaking to them and leading them, overthrowing them, right? And we're speaking to the Gentiles. This is an attack on the Gentiles specifically. Mm-hmm. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past filling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Mm. So Satan tries to give you everything that you can in this world so that you don't look on to the righteousness of Elohim. That's why the Gentiles are doing so well right. overall. Right, because they knew what their weakness was going to be. Right. Vanity. Right. They've been given over to that loss to keep them there. Right. And understand the loss isn't always money. Right. Not everyone's lost his money. Some people lost other things. It says lascivious, work all uncleanness. Like right. they, they might be a fornicator, an idolater. Yes. So that, that's just making sure they understand it's not just a monetary aspect when it right. comes to that loss that he gives. That's a great exhortation for the Gentiles to be aware of what Satan is seeking to do. Right. So you can understand and come out of it. And turn on to Adonayache, turn on to Ahayalahaya. But ye have not so learned, Mashiach. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him. Notice you have heard him. Right now he's the one speaking to you. Now you can hearken into the righteousness of Adonayache and walk in his ways. As the truth is in Yache that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Oh, this is a great call for the Gentiles. I don't know Yache is calling you. Right. To turn unto him and put off the old man, forsake your former ways, and turn unto the true righteousness, the faith of Ahayah Elohim. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now you see very straight, the Gentiles. You need to become a new man too. All right. You need to put on Mashiach Yache, which will enable you to operate in righteousness and holiness as well. This war of the mind is attacking you as well. It's not just the Israelites. All right. Satan wants to destroy all men. So be encouraged and exhorted by the words of Apostle Paul from Adonayachi to know that this hope is for you as well. And you'll be strengthened as well to know the war that's going on within you that you may overcome through Yache as well. Right? Wherefore, putting away lying, which is another major stumbling block for the Gentiles. Lying. Yes. They said in the end they shall say our fathers inherited lies. Right. There's a lot of lies that have been told to keep them where they are. And unfortunately, Gentiles, they inherited the trait of being powerful liars. Yes. Like they can lie and continue on with their day like nothing happened. And they can go from a lie to another lie very quickly. And not saying that Israelites can't do this, but it's majority prominent in the Gentiles based off how they were raised. That's what it is in the fact that this letter Paul wrote is to the Gentiles to help them overcome the things they struggle with. And Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 shows that this type of behavior would be found in those that worship idols. Hence, the children of Israel also can be found liars too because we also started worshiping idols too. That lying has affected us all, Jew and Gentile now. All in all, it's still an exhortation for all of us. 
to turn away from. These lessons are to identify the works of the enemy so that we all can know him for what he is and stand aloof from him. That's right. Because that's what the apostles were doing. They were calling out the works of Satan. They were letting them know what's going on so that they can be aware and fight the fight. This is what he's going to do. Look out for this. Like, right. Right. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Right. But that's Israelite and Gentile. We're all together in the body of Mishiach in truth. That's right. And we all should have the mind of Yahweh now. Because that's the mind that we have been given through faith. And obedience by keeping the commandments and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. If you look at 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, and then Colossians 3 and 1. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And if we abide still as our old man, in our carnal mind, we won't become subject to the law. Because the carnal mind is enmity with Allah Hayyam, and we won't be able to receive the spiritual things of the law. Because, because the law is spiritual, as Romans 7 and 14 said. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit is in all righteousness, goodness, and truth, as Ephesians 5 and 9 said. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. This is speaking of the Father of spirits. He's the one that's judged of no man. And knowing he judges all things, we don't judge others, but we judge ourselves to ensure that we are in the faith, examining our own selves, and not comparing ourselves amongst ourselves. For who hath known the mind of Adonai, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. We don't know all the thoughts of the Father, as he said, his thoughts are above our thoughts, and his ways are above our ways. So we can't instruct him, yet we have the mind of Christ to be instructed within ourselves to know what we need to do to be accepted of it. Through that mind of Mishiach, we'll be working in all righteousness and holiness. Because Ephesians chapter 4, we had just read, said, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and the new man, according to righteousness and holiness. So you see how the gospel was teaching us by putting on the mind of Yahche. Now we have the mind to war, this warfare, and attain unto the hope through Yahche. And Colossians 3 and 1, okay. please. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Messiah, seek those things which are above, where Messiah sitteth on the right hand of Elohim. The holy things that are above are the holy robes and crowns that await their saints, that keep the commandments and the patience of Yahshua Christ. Those are the things that we have to have in our mind to know the reward to come. If we endure, keeping the commandments, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, through faith in the name Yache. Now, with all this exhortation, let's be encouraged to war this warfare and to stand aloof from the works of Satan, because we know this is this spirits fighting against us. Hence, we have to be very mindful to guard ourselves from them. Ephesians six and twelve. Ephesians chapter six, verse twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Nasus is not against man. All right. These are spirits. Hence, we can't war with flesh and blood. All right. We have to war according to the spirit. Because it's spirits that's attacking us, we have to fight them with the spirit of life. Right. <laughs> uh, that's what Paul was talking about in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Elohim. Casting down imaginations and every high thing. Now you understand what that high thing is because he said spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. These are evil spirits and casting every imagination down to the obedience of Yahche. As we talked about before, you hear the evil thoughts, you don't give heed to them nor attend to them. Right. You turn from them, you say, Ahaya, deliver me. Ahaya, that's not true. You hear what he's saying. Yache, help me. Keep me from them. That's not according to your commandments. 
you turn to righteousness, you get away from that evil spirit's conversation. Don't sit there and listen to it because it's just trying to draw you in. You have to flee, as Simeon said, flee unto Adonai, flee unto Yache. Ask Ahaya for help. Because he doesn't reject those that call upon him in sincerity. All right. Continue. And bringeth into captivity every thought to be obedient of Meshiach. It was shown to Hermas by the angel of repentance, the two angels that are with a man, angel of iniquity and angel of righteousness. And he was shown who to trust, who to obey, who to cleave to. All right. And that angel of righteousness is under Yache. He might hearken to the angel of righteousness brings us into the obedience of Mishiach right. and keeps us away from the works of the devil. And that's how we cast down every imagination and high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Allah. And we had talked earlier about how if you say, in the name of Ahaya, I rebuke thee right. to the evil spirit, you are taking power into your own hands. Right. We are exhorting, don't have a conversation with that evil angel or evil spirit. You turn unto Ahaya, Ahaya, deliver me. Cast the spirit from me, please. That's, that's right. You know, you talk to your master. Just as Isaac went to his father, we ought to go to our father and talk to him. Go to our Dunham and master and talk to him that's right. to be helped and not take it upon ourselves. Through the experiences of Simeon, we see how to truly cast out evil spirits from our minds and our hearts. It's by fasting in the fear of Allah, I am working our righteousness, being faithful in trusting the angel of righteousness and his works. And doing these things, sowing the law in our hearts, is going to bring forth the fruits of the spirit, which is the weapons of our warfare that are carnal, and will bring down into captivity these imaginations, thoughts, and high things that seek to take us away from our salvation. Continue, please. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That shows you have to get to perfection because we have to fulfill our obedience and in the end, when we do what we're supposed to do, those evil spirits shall get their reward in the judgment. So with that, we see how the fruits of the Spirit actually deliver us from the works of Satan. Because our weapons are not carnal, but mighty to the breaking down of these strongholds. As even Colossians 1 and 11 talked about, the power and might is in patience, long-suffering with joy. We know how we can be delivered in our minds by the obedience. Now we know these things. Let's walk in the mind of Yahshua to attain. We're going to read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, please. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Messiah have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Notice what the sufferings we have to partake in. Because Yahweh suffered by faith and his works. Because he believed what Ahaya had said for him, and he did what Ahaya said to do. As we talked about in the lesson, Yahweh, our example. So if one is saying we are Christians, true Christians, according to the gospel, partake in the sufferings of Yahweh and stop sinning. It's a good thing to be a Christian. Peter mentioned being Christians. Paul told the marks of a true Christian in Romans 12 and about 9 to 21 or something there. Now we know what it takes to be a true Christian. We have to stop sinning. We have to fight this war in our mind and put on the mind of Yache. Be renewed. It's amazing what the gospel is saying. Continue. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of Allah. There we see what a true Christian would do. These are the true Christians that we ought to be, fighting this war in our mind. Because it's, it's suffering because we're overcoming ourselves. You're fighting against who you were, everything you were, being broken down. 
as you're learning more and more things that you have to change, you're being broken down. And the mind of Yahshua is increasing in you until you attain unto the full obedience of the faith. And all that suffering keeps you from sinning because you're just being purged further and further away from your former self that you will no longer live the rest of your life in lust. But you're now going to live the rest of your life serving Ahaya Ahaya. Because you've taken on that warfare, you engage that battle in your mind first to overcome everything else. You overcome within you, you will no longer be a hypocrite. Because right. now you're working righteousness within and without. Right. From your heart, you're doing all things in sincerity now. Walking in honesty amongst all men, Jew and Gentile. With that is... May this exhortation touch your hearts. Right. It's a great calling for all, all nations who hope in Yache. By the strength of Yache, we can overcome. I'm good. I have you magnified. Praise I have. Shalom. Shalom.